Welcome back to John's Films. A year ago, I published a video on my then new Ubiquiti Unify system. Many of you watched and subscribed and I got a bunch of how about now questions throughout the year. With that, I'm going to show you how it really works and looks. I'm not running a perfectly cable managed beauty rack here. And that's evidence this entire network was paid for by me with zero sponsorship by Ubiquiti. And I should state, I do have Ubiquiti shareholdings in portfolios that I manage. Despite all that, you're going to see the real deal as it evolved into a 10 gigabit, seven switch, nine camera, four access point, 60 client party. First, if you haven't seen Ubiquiti's prosumer networks before, they give you significantly more insight into your network and have fantastic extension capabilities over your standard router. I went to the system after trying mesh network solutions that cover my 2000 square foot house. They sucked. I wanted to be able to capitalize on my gigabit internet and be able to connect to my server for remote file storage at 10 gigabit speeds. Prior to this solution, I've run everything from a cable modem's packaged router to NetGate's PFSense devices. TLDR, nothing has been as stable, as powerful, or as easy to use as the Unify system. It's not without its drawbacks though. Here's my system. You can see I have a Unify Dream Machine Pro at the top. This is my network controller and gateway, security system host, and eight port switch. It's the brains of the operation and does most of the routing in the network. Below it, I have an aggregation switch, though I'm using it for distribution at 10 gigabit rather than as a topper rack solution. Below the patch panel under it, you see a 24 port USW Pro PoE switch. It has nine cameras and four access points directly wired to it from all over the house. This was a dream for cable management and let me put the devices exactly where I wanted to. Finally, in the stack, we have a UNVR, which has four eight terabyte drives in it and records 30 plus days of 24 by seven 4K media from my security cameras. The drives are NAS rated spinning drives and are striped in RAID 5. While the configuration helps with the speed hit of the platters, I wish they were SSDs. Frankly, if I were smart, I probably would have put one SSD in the UDM Pro and called it a day. That's not to say it doesn't work. I just want it to be instantaneous. And unfortunately right now, it's not. However, with the AI enabled smart events, it's pretty easy to target exactly what I want to find. Traversing the network under the 24 port switch, here you can see cameras, which are G4 Pros, and then the access points of which I have a U6 Pro, a U6 Lite, and a U6 Long Range. I plan to release a video on how I tuned these in the future, so be sure to subscribe. I have them executing seamless hands-offs at this point. Further along the switch, I have a run to my living room entertainment center. It terminates in a PoE light switch that pulls power from the 24 port and connects my smart TV and Apple TV directly to the network. Overkill? <laughs> I think not. The eagle eyed among you may have noticed I enabled link aggregation between the aggregation switch and the 24 port. This is entirely unnecessary and likely introduces a performance hit as the system decides on how to organize the traffic. But who cares? It's fun to play with and it's cool to see it say 20 gigabit. Before I get too far, the aggregation switch is a layer two switch, meaning it doesn't control IP based routing and routes that traffic up to the UDM Pro for routing decisions. Sure, it would be better if it did, but at uh, 10 gigabit speeds, it only costs $269. Plugged into it via direct attach copper, DAC. I have a 24 port, the NVR, an uplink to the UDM Pro, my server via RJ45 transceiver module, and a run of fiber to my office. <laughs> yeah, fiber to the studio. No, it's not overkill. Jumping down the fiber, you can see a switch XG6 PoE. This is my 10 gigabit connection into my editing rig, two gaming computers, another entertainment center switch for TV, Apple TV, Xbox and PlayStation, a Flex HD AP, and a Switch Lite 16 PoE. John, this is getting stupid. To make sure I understand it, you have a UDM Pro to an aggregation switch to an XG6 Lite to a Lite 16 PoE and a separate PoE entertainment switch? At what point do we call this overkill? Okay, I, I already have several times, but this is required. You see the Lite 16 is hosting lighting controllers, four Raspberry Pis I have functioning as a Kubernetes cluster. Nerds among us, let me know if this is of interest for a video. We've covered the physical network. You can see it's grown significantly over the year, but this isn't the whole story. The power of the Unify system isn't just the hardware. 
The software has undergone significant changes this year, and I think it's much more user-friendly than when I originally picked it up. I really like the security goodies that have been added, like built-in honeypots, better VPN support, and what appears to be an improved testing methodology in the releases. My network's been really stable of late, despite a lot of releases. A drawback for many, however, is the way users connect to the solution when away from the host network. You see, if I want to administer the network remotely, I can, but it comes at a cost. Ubiquity hosts what is effectively a dynamic DNS solution with credential management in their data center. Or, as we found out in an AWS outage last week, in Amazon's cloud. The result is a corporate entity with the ownership of the keys to my network. This has become even more of an issue for many after Ubiquity suffered a data breach by an internal threat actor in 2020. I have determined I still trust Ubiquity with my password and use two-factor authentication for a further layer of security. What has to be my favorite part of this system, however, isn't the product I've got or even the fantastic software. It's the continued evolution through R&D by Ubiquity. Like much of the industry, the new 10 gigabit Ethernet and Wi-Fi 6 solutions appear to be ready for the prime time. The Unify Access solution is really neat, and many items we can't discuss from their early access store show me 2022 is going to be a huge year, and I'm looking forward to any announcements around CES next month. Thanks for watching. If this has been helpful or interesting, please click like below, subscribe if you want to see more content, and have a great day.